Hey, welcome back to Rob's Garage Woodworking. Today I'm going to show you how to make a cyclone separator, which is part of a beast. Okay, with your input, your output to your back. This one has a clear top so that you can see, so I can show you guys what's going on with it. And then the base of the cyclone is actually your dust bucket. And your dust bucket has a window in it so you can see how much sawdust you have in it. So this is actually a little less than half full. Alright? I'm going to show you how to make that nice and easy out of inexpensive materials. So, this is how clean the vacuum is. Okay, pretty, pretty clean. Just blew all the dust out of it. And the vacuum, the filter itself is pretty good. Nothing on it. So we're going to close up the vacuum. This is also empty. Not going to it yet. Put the top on. The cam locks on. Now, this hose here, this one, is the one that leads into the cyclone. So this is the one that you hook up or you don't have that you uh, use for your dust port. The other one, this one here, this one's going to go into the back. Alright, oops. This one goes into my vacuum. This is your vacuum port, this is your dust port, basically. So these are plumbing couplers, so we have two plumbing couplers. Then I'm going to get the dust out and make a pile and you can see how it's going. Right, so we're going to show you vacuuming this stuff up first and then I'll bring the camera over here and show this part. All right? All right, so everything is vacuumed up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this off and I'll show you what's going in the bucket. Alright, so here's that. See how everything's inside. Then in the vacuum, so the vacuum is nice and clean. No dust on it at all. So all this is in the bucket, which is just about half of a regular bucket. Alright, all that without getting anything in your shop back. Right. Now why is this a big deal for woodworkers? And why is this a big deal for Dyson? Uh, because what happens is normally all your sawdust gets stuck to your pleated filter and then your vacuum has no suction. I won't vacuum anything. Alright, for the construction of the cyclone you're going to have a top and bottom plate. And these are going to be half inch MDF and they're going to be 12 by 12. So two pieces of 12 by 12 half inch MDF, top and bottom. And the cyclone. And the cyclone itself, the body of the cyclone, is going to be four pieces of three quarter inch particle board, also 12 by 12. So we'll cut all those at the same time. And then we're going to build a box. Instead of using a bucket, which is kind of a pain in the butt, we're going to use a box this time. I'm going to switch it up, make it a little bit nicer. And again, I use three quarter inch particle board, and we need three pieces. You need a box bottom, and you need a front and a back. Alright? Those are 12 by 12. So, that's for the box. And then, you're going to need sides for your box. So, the sides are 10 and a half by 12. Okay? So again, make your 12 inch cuts first and then your 10 and a half. That's for your box sides. Okay? Now, one more thing we're going to need is a piece of plexiglass. Alright, so the plexiglass you're going to need is 3 sixteenths of an inch approximately. So a little smaller than a quarter. And I got this from Lowe's. It was pretty cheap. I got a, a fairly large sheet of it for 30 bucks, which I thought was a good deal. 
All right. And this is going to be for your box when you drill the holes in the side of the box so you can look inside and see how full your box is. All right, for our next step, we need to make the cyclone baffle. And when we cut out the uh, channel where the sawdust falls out on the cyclone baffle, um, it is going to be on a slight angle, as is the whole cyclone is going to be on a slight angle. So it's a little bit of a trickier build. So what I've done is I've gone ahead and I've set my my jigsaw to a 15 degree angle. You see it's on a slight angle. And because we're using three quarter inch material and we're going to have a slight taper on the edge, we're going to move in one inch. Okay, and then draw our circle with our beam compass. So our dropout channel is going to be, what is it, three quarters of an inch. So three quarters of an inch, basically a finger roll. So your dropout channel comes all the way along here, okay, 270 degrees. Okay. So here's our finished cyclone baffle. Light comes in here, gets dropped out, falls in through this channel. Okay? Now, your cyclone body, which is going to be these four pieces here, you want to find the center on that. Now, this is going to be on an angle, right? So we're going to take the same board and we're going to flip it upside down because we want it to taper. Now, what we're going to do is we will line this up as close as possible so we don't have a lot of work to do later cleaning everything up. And take a pencil and we're going to go around the outside basically. And that's going to be our next circle. Alright, to add to the confusion when you're building this, once again, once you see that final product you'll understand. But so the first cut we did on an angle, so it was tapered out this way. And now, in order to stack it up properly and have our cuts be on a tapered angle, we actually have to turn our jigsaw around and cut this way, okay? So it's going to be like this and tapered so that the bottom is going to be smaller. And we're going to do that on each of the plates, okay? All right, so here's your baffle. And we're going to stack this one on top of it. Okay. And that's going to go on top. And you're going to start to see, if you kind of line it up, you start to see that there's a taper being generated. Alright? So it goes in on an angle. I don't know if you can really catch that. The camera or not, but you should start to see that taper. Alright? So, once again, what you're going to do is actually you're just going to take this one and you're going to take the smaller one and put it up on top here and you are going to line everything up perfectly as perfect as you can get and this is where it's important that you take in your time and your cuts okay? Alright, so the next step, you want to take these and you want to go around and make sure that they fit together as close as possible. So when you've cut them out, you've cut them out in series, right? And if you turn it, like say you have it this way, and you turn it this way, sometimes it fits better if you orient them a different way. So go through it, check them all out, make sure you got them the way that you want them, line them all up get them as close as possible and then there's less finish work to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to glue it together. So you finish gluing it all together, clamp it all, make sure it's all nice and neat and don't worry about glue squeeze out. Then you want to drill and countersink and I'm using uh, number 10 uh, 3 inch screws, wood screws. You could use particle board screws if you want. And then what you're going to do is just drill these in Alright, so next what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to file it smooth, okay? So try to keep it as round as possible, but try to even it up as much as you can because you're going to be off a little bit with your jigsaw cuts. So start with a really aggressive file. I've got like a very large file here, very aggressive teeth, and then move on to like a finer file later. And you can even sand it smooth if you want. Now, you want to take your 
bottom plate, okay, which is your baffle. You want to put that on. You want to make sure. Oops, so down. You want to make sure that it fits nicely and that there's no overhangs. Like you don't want a big spot here where the sawdust is going to accumulate. So you have to make sure that that follows the profile and it's nice and smooth all the way. So double check that, recut a little bit if you need, or file out a couple of spots and get it so it's perfect. And then what we're going to do, actually, let me just work it this way. What we're going to do is we're going to glue this on. Glue it and screw it. All right. So we cut a piece of back central back tubing. Okay. Central back tubing is really cheap. It's like for a 10 foot length, it's probably around $10 or something. So I cut the end on around a 45 degree angle, and that's going to fit in here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put some uh, construction adhesive around it. So what we have to do is we have to drill a hole. So it's going to fit. The air is going to come into the cycle like this. It's going to come in here and cycle around and come out the top. So. Anyway, what we have to do is we have to cut this, cut a hole for this and slide it in. So, what you want to do is actually, let's put this back here. So you want to find this point here, this edge. You want to draw a line, basically, around that edge. So that's the closest. I'm going to have to move the screw. <laughs> All right. So basically, I want my hole, the edge of my hole, to go right there. All right. So what we're going to do is we are going to transfer a line out of here. All right. So the bit will come out all the way. It has to come all the way out to here. So this will take a bit of really to get it there. So, we're going to center it in between our two boards up here, we're right on the line, safety glasses, we're going to use a Forstner bit, this is two and an eight. So while we have the uh, PL Premium out, we're going to put some on here, and we're going to put our central back tube inside. So what we want to do is just kind of put a bit around in here. So we'll put that around inside. Just can't really see it once back back to you. Okay. And what we're gonna do is I'm actually gonna put a screw in there to hold it in place. And I can take that one out after.